Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. We had a lot of fun with ballistic gelatin in the past. And when I found out that after the move that I'm living about 15 minutes away from the Gelida AG, I thought I gotta visit these guys. They produce about 25% of the world's need for gelatin, of course for lots of different purposes. Ballistic gelatin is just a tiny portion of their business. But we sure wanted to find out all about it. So, here we are, and this is the man. <laughs> I'm here with Michael Tetner, who is, uh, I think, responsible for marketing. That's correct. For the company. Michael, would you care to explain us what is Gelita, what kind of company is Gelita? Yeah, we are a, a family-owned, 141-year-old uh, uh, company. Uh, we are purely dedicated to gelatin and collagen products. And we are world market leader and uh, operating on each continent with in total 20 production plants. Great. Congratulations. Very impressive. Okay. How many employees do you have? Uh, globally we have approximately 2,500 employees, 900 here in Germany, because in Germany we have headquarters, R&D, research centers. So it's uh, quite a bit. That's a decent sized organization. Yeah, we are still mid-sized, so we are one of the so-called hidden champions. In <laughs> What is your best selling product? Uh, gelatin for sure. And gelatin predominantly is used in the food industry uh, and secondly in the pharmaceutical industry for capsules. Okay. So I think number one worldwide known are the fruit gums. In Germany the gummy beers, uh, fruit confectionery, table jellies like Buckelpeter, Götterspeise uh -huh. and this kind of stuff. And as I mentioned uh, capsules for medicine, for the medication, the hard and soft shell capsules. But of course also for the end consumer, the leaf gelatin, maybe mm -hmm. not all, but many people know the, the leaf gelatin which you take for home cooking as well as the chefs in restaurants. What is gelatin really? Gelatin is pure collagen and collagen is a protein. So uh, collagen is the binding agent in our body. So, so without it, it, we would dissolve and just run down the toilet? You would not use your muscles, you would not use your tendons, your bones, your cartilage, your skin. So all call it soft parts of the body and also the bones are mainly composed of collagen. Collagen gives elasticity and stabili stability. Therefore, in the fruit gum, it is a stable and a nice stability. So your business mostly is to separate that collagen from the rest of the body so that you can sell concentrated products. For sure, we are not taking it from the body. We, our, okay. raw material, our raw material is coming from animals, it's from skins, mainly pig skin and, okay. and beef skin. Mm -hmm. And here we separate the collagen and we get a lot of fat as well and mm -hmm. minerals and all these natural products we process and sell it into uh, areas like food, pharma and other applications. Can you give me a rough estimation of the total volume of your output? Yeah, so uh, all together with gelatin, fats and the other products, we have several hundred thousand metric tons, uh, which we are sell producing and selling, and it's all natural, so we have no waste, that's the good stuff. Several hundred thousand tons. Yes. Oh, that's a huge pile. <laughs> yeah, every 30 seconds a truck leaves Gelita at some part in the world. Very cool. Who is your typical customer? Our customers are the companies who are producing either food or capsules, so as the Haribo's, the Nestle's, the Unilever's, or the big pharma companies. What would you say is the biggest challenge in your business? The, honestly spoken, it is because we are having a natural product, so we are relying on natural sources is to getting the good, right, high quality raw material, because it's not only us asking for this raw material, many other industries as well. So due to the high standards we have and, and the demand for pure collagen, this is the toughest thing. So sales isn't the biggest problem, but getting the raw materials? You have to ask her, but no, <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, fortunately we are operating. Sales in always complains. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come no. on. I understand you also have specialty products yeah. that you are really proud about. 
Can you uh, tell us about? It? Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, specialties like medical devices uh, for blood absorption in during surgery, which nobody really likes to have, and you do, usually don't see it. Uh, but also for for uh, restoration of books, damaged books, and ballistic gelatin. And ballistic gelatin. I think it's kind of smart and cool because customers are FBI, CIA, German police. That's cool. Oh, but I understand it's only a tiny portion of your uh, sales. Right? Yeah, but as usual, the small things are the most challenging because the gelatin requested for ballistic gelatin, the, the uh, um, profile is extremely challenging for us. So now we're entering the production facility. And of course, they insist on the hair net, which is really important because you don't want my hair in your gelatin. The process is to get the collagen out of the raw material. So therefore, the skins are coming here in these big washing tanks, which are also um, filled with a different water temperature. So it's starting with 60 degrees Celsius to get a gentle melting out of the collagen. And then it's purification, cleaning, cleaning, ultra sterilization, ultra heat sterilization. What could I do with all these tubes? <laughs> this gel is then pumped through this, uh, through the sieves and you get these famous gelatin noodles which then are going in a drying belt and on this drying belt there's conditioned air, sterilized air to remove the rest of water. Finally there's a grinding process and then you get the gelatin into via the silo into big bags of 1000 kilogram going into, into medium storage. Now we're going to talk to the expert for ballistic gelatin here at Gelita. Now we are getting more specific. I'm here with uh, Dr. Christoph Simon, uh, who is the man for ballistic gelatin in this company, right? That's right. I'm product manager for the ballistic gelatins. How does ballistic gelatin differ from the regular stuff? Ballistic gelatin is in principle a food grade gelatin. So it's produced in our normal production, but there are specially selected qualities due to the request of the customers that they want to perform reproducible tests with such a gelatin. Okay, so it's all about scientific reproducibility. Reproducibility, right? <laughs> uh, say, that's the main focus mm -hmm. the customers are on because they want to simulate the behavior of human tissues or animals and therefore they need a gelatin which is tailor made for such an application. Is this edible? Can you eat that? Yeah, so the ballistic gelatin from Gelita are edible grade gelatins. They are all fit for human consumption. So you use this for forensic purposes. What exactly does it simulate? So the gelatin blocks which are prepared out of the gelatins simulate human tissue or whole animals. So basically what you're saying is tissue like muscle and so on is simulated but of course skin and bone is not simulated. No. If you want to add this to the experiment you would have to uh, change the nature of it. This means you have to cover it or you have to melt in the bone or something yeah, yeah. like so this. So that's what customers already do if they want to have say more complex structures. A normal person, can that person buy ballistic gelatin from you guys? Not directly from Gelita, only if the amount is, is high enough as we are companies selling B2B. Okay. Um, so you can order ballistic gelatins in an amount with 75 kilograms or higher here from Gelita Europe. Okay, um, 75 kilograms would mean that you could make anything between 350 and 750 liters or kilograms of end product, right? Yeah, of ballistic blocks. That's so a huge that's, block. <laughs> yeah, but therefore we have also distribution partner, okay. the company Sigma Aldrich. They are mm -hmm. offering our range of the three ballistic gelatin types we offer. There you mm -hmm. can buy amounts in the one kilo and five kilogram scales. Okay. I'll put the link down there, folks, so don't worry. Can you also make ballistic gelatin from gummy bears? Uh, so. In a gummy bear you have only a t total tiny amount of gelatin. Most of the structure is made by the sugar. So if you try to make a ballistic block out of gummy bears, this will in principle will function, but you will not have um, the, the, the right consistent and it will be too weak to 
um, to, to give a good structure. Okay. We have not tested so far, <laughs> but well, let's give it a try. I give it a shot. <laughs> So we've tasted the end product, now let's look at it. When it's delivered, it comes in the form of a powder. I think they have three different types. This looks a lot more fine-grained. And now we look at how to make a block of ballistic gelatin from this. Okay, we are now in the laboratory and this is uh, Selima Zeib, who is a specialist in the lab. And she's going to guide us through the right way of making ballistic gelatin. Okay, let me show you its features. Yeah! Okay, first we are adding 450 milliliters of water into this uh, glass. We're making American gelatin, which is a 10% solution. The German type is 20% and the Russian probably 60%. <laughs> now the powder is added while steering. I think to avoid any clogging. Because we have been using cold water, this has not simply been dissolving, but it's uh, swollen. It's really, it swells up and forms this mass, which is far away from a transparent ballistic gelatin block, but it's important in the process to avoid any bubbles. Okay, so what you're doing is you're putting this into the warm water bath, yes. so that it's finally dissolving and, uh, and it's getting into this clear, really beautiful shape. And then you can pour it into a mold, whatever you need, a block, you know, a head, whatever. Okay, so this with a uh, water bath is kind of beautiful, but it's also tricky, it's kind of hard to do. But I think you could also do this on a normal oven plate, yeah. right, like here. The only thing that you have to uh, take care of is to not boil it, because otherwise the gelatin will break up. Then you have to let it cool overnight, and the end result will be this, and this is a 10% block nice and firm and um, this is the difference between the 20% and the 10% and you can really feel it this is a lot tougher typical American this will look more spectacular when you shoot things into it while this of course is more efficient the German way but usually if you don't do anything special the gelatin will go bad after about three four days just like a corpse but of course you can add conservatives and this helps of course it maintains the original structure, but you can also dry it like this. And this is uh, probably 60 years old, and it, it was when it started, it was a block like this. And then, because the water evaporated, this is the output, and it feels like plastic, and it will probably last forever. And this here is using glycerin for preservation, so it still feels like ballistic gelatin but you can store it forever. Interesting. Of course, now it's no longer edible. That was a beautiful trip, beautiful visit. Thanks guys for showing me all this. And now we're gonna shoot at these things. <laughs>and this is totally non-transparent and it's it's a lot more firm than the other cakes i guess that's simply because of all the sugar in it okay for our first test we're going to shoot a kunai knife into each one of the cakes oops <laughs> Ha ha ha. 
The outcome is quite clear. This one penetrated this deep. I'd say that's probably two and a half inches or so. Into the 20%, it penetrated much less deep. So it's probably only, I'd say maybe almost like two inches. And the uh, gummy bear was the toughest of all. Wow, it's almost impossible to get it out of the sticky mess, see? Only penetrated an inch maybe. Now we will be shooting 20 millimeter steel balls at the ballistic gelatin and the gummy bear. All right, the 10% mixture first. Okay. Boink, and now the gummy bear. So the FBI piece really saw some penetration here. It's not bad. But the 20% block, much tougher. And the gummy bear wasn't even impressed. Let's see how a 15 millimeter steel ball fares. You can see the result. Quite deep into the FBI ballistic. Not so deep in the 20% one. And as you see, it kind of sticks into the gummy bear. Wow. Yeah, gummy bear is not impressed. This is, of course, is not my most powerful band set. It's just a double layer, non-tapered band. And uh, with a triple layer and a layered band, I could probably get a lot more penetration. As you see, it is very important to have reproducible results. Because, see, there's almost no penetration in this block and very deep penetration in the FBI block. Um, so neither of these will probably be very correct, but it is comparable. So if I shoot in with something different, something stronger, then I can compare the result to this. And uh, the gummy bear, of course, is the most tough one. I don't think that this is uh, comparable to human meat. It is much tougher because it's so sticky and dense. Does it still taste like a gummy bear? Well, let's find out. to cut. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Consistency and taste. It is umi bear, for sure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Much easier. And not a problem at all. Well, this was our little special episode about ballistic gelatin. I hope you guys learned something. Because that's it for today. Thanks and bye-bye.